It says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. We're live, finally! <laughs> oh, geez, Louise and all them other ones out there. I can't see if we're live or not, but I'm just going to take everybody's word for it that we're live. Oh, it sort of shows that we're frame today's casual friday as you can tell oral jason are you frozen no you're not frozen okay we've had some technical difficulties today it's saying my internet connection is unstable but what it really means is that the operator's unstable probably <laughs> anyway we are talking to a mechanic where it's a mechanic's point of view today jason and i brought you on the show because you have been a very busy person these past few weeks haven't you yeah a lot of projects. <laughs> a lot of projects. So give us an overview of some of the things you've accomplished since the centers have been closed down for business, as we normally know it. You've taken this time and said, hey, we don't get this opportunity very often. And I'm going to tackle what? What have you What have you tackled so far? Uh, we painted the entire center. The uh, entire center. Floor to ceiling. <laughs> that is not an easy job. Um, a lot of pressure washing, sidewalks, you know, entranceways. Um, I went to another center and helped install gutters, bumpers, capping light. Um, I went to another center, tear down some walls and, and help with some of the remodeling there. Um, I've changed three gearboxes, complete gearboxes. If you have any gearboxes you want changed and fixed up, just send them over to Jason. He's got it for you. <laughs> So what you're saying is you've made really good use of this time when you normally wouldn't have the ability to take pairs of lanes out or uh, start doing painting within with customers in the facility. You can't do that. So you'd have to do right. all that overnight and make sure it was dry. Um, what are uh, what are some of the immediate things that you did for your equipment when you found out you were going to be closed? Like, what are some of the first things you said? OK, we're going to be shut down for a little bit. I'm going to do this. What did you do? Well, uh... First, I hooked all the scoring. Um, our deck lights come on automatically. We have center punch. So they come on a certain time every day. So I disconnect them so they weren't running all the time. Um, but as far as the machines, I've still been running the machines. So Good. And I've heard that that's one thing you should be doing, running your machines every so often, putting them on auto cycle and let them go for 10, 20 minutes. Yeah, they don't like to sit. <laughs> no, they don't like to sit. That's for sure. We definitely know that. Um, so I'm sure you've said to yourself, look, after this league is done, I'm going to make the time to do this. Um, and you've, you've accomplished some of those things. But what are some of the things that you've always really wanted to do that you didn't have the time to do before? Um, the gearboxes is probably a big thing because something goes wrong and it's not up for the next one. You know, you normally don't have the time to make sure all the adjustments and everything are right. And right. Broken, you have no choice, but... Uh, that lane is then out of commission until you get that gearbox fixed. Exactly. And I only have 18, so I don't have many to spare. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, especially you got a full house of league for you is is not a huge league. So you're probably full most of the time with, with you know, regular business. You can't Just about all our leagues are full house, yeah. Yeah, so you lose one lane, you're 5% down on revenue on bowling yep. already. Well, like 6%, really. So yeah, it's really super important for people, especially those of you small centers out there. You don't have the real estate to afford. A 70 or 80 lane center, yeah, fine. Oh, they lose pair? It's not not the end of the world, right? What is that? 2% of their business at best? 1%? Um, in a small center, it could be 10% of your business. Like if you only have a 10 lane center, you lose a pair, and now you're talking 20% of your bowling revenue that you're not able to pull in. Okay, so um, I got some other questions here and I know we touched base a little bit of some of these things, but do you have any uh, items that you would suggest stocking up on or being prepared for once the center begins to reopen? Because now the conversation is uh, there's, you know, yesterday the President Trump talked on the, on the update about reopening the country and I live in Texas and today our governor was on starting to talk about opening parts of the state up and what it's going to be like. So knowing that your facilities are going to start to come back online, what are some of the things that you think are the most important things to be checking out and stocking up on? Well, I, I got lucky. I use rubbing alcohol in the back at my center to clean things and whatever anyway. 
so I had like two cases and now everybody's coming to borrow all my <laughs> right because they're trying to sanitize and clean everything properly yep yep, yep. so that's one thing for sure mm -hmm. uh what about uh what about cleaning supplies for the lanes uh your your cleaners for the uh for the machines are they anything special that you're going to have a hard time getting down the road do you think i, I don't believe so i don't no. have any problem with that okay okay Be beautiful and then um you were talking a little earlier about uh i asked you about you know uh we, i've watched on social media you follow a lot of the centers on social media or the mechanics groups you've yep, probably been seeing a You've probably been seeing a fair amount of people's work. They're showing it. You know, Gary mm -hmm. Shank was uh, was doing his um, turret work. He had some, was doing some cleaning, and I, you could eat dinner off of that turret. And I was like, that is a clean machine, especially for you know an A2 because they're just a beast sometimes to, yep. to get a hold of. So you have A2s there at your facility. Mm -hmm. How much more demanding are they than say an 8270? I don't know much about 8270s, to be honest with you. Um, we have them in some of our centers. I've seen them work. I've never really worked on them. Oh, okay. I don't know what they all entail. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know that they're more um, more electrical and less mechanical, I guess is the best way to say it. A2s right, are that's probably about the extent electrical. of what I know about them. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, well, I, I'm no expert, that's for sure. But you are an expert at A2s. There's, that's one thing. I'm not comfortable crawling in an A2 personally. I can do the taps, the ball, the outer range, and the, I mean, four stops I can fix. And I'm not going to reset pins because I ain't crawling under there. But um, <laughs> I do know that it's quite complex and it requires a lot of knowledge for uh, mechanical stuff there. Um, let, let, what, what's your message that you want to say of hope to? say uh other mechanics that are out there other facility managers because you're not just working on lane machines right you're fixing everything in no. the building yeah I, I, I do complete building maintenance most of most people wear that hat will wear all mm -hmm. those hats also in, in your position what's your message to them i don't know um we actually had a meeting with pat this morning okay and uh one of the main parts of the meeting was we're going to come out of this bowling will be back May not be what you're used to, may be a little different, but it'll be back. It will be back. I agree with that. Um, with social distancing measures going on and they're, you know, part of the planning for reopening, shall we say, really is dependent on following some of these protocols that they put into place. I think we're going to see um, our business look a little differently early on for sure. Like, when you are open, maybe you don't get to use every lane. Maybe it's every other lane. Maybe right. it's yeah. every third Spacing lane. Spacing them out. So that's going to require then, you can't always use lane one and three and five. You're going to have to switch it up at some point and start using two, four, and six. You yep. know, So it's going to require some communication and efforts among both the back of the house and the front of the house to say, you know, this is where your lineage reports, I think, come in really handy because you, your, your usage reports, because you can see what lanes have been used and then you can plan to use the opposite ones for some time. And if, if you have a, um, a management system that gives you that kind of report, I bet you're gonna probably rely on it a lot more in the future than you have been in the past. I know we've, we've been on autopilot for so long and some of us that have been in the industry a long time, we have our ways of doing things. So I think the biggest takeaway is that we're going to have to switch some of those ways probably and it's going to be uncomfortable yep. for it. and the same yep. holds true i'm assuming with mechanics like you might have to do your business a little differently down the road yeah now some of the things we talked about this morning is we have the super touches how are we going to stop people from touching them everybody's going to want to touch them uh you know same thing reset buttons obviously the bowling balls how we're going to keep those sanitize and clean those yeah um yeah, I've seen some creative solutions to uh, people not wanting to touch certain things. They'll cover it with a plastic, you know, holder. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I had the thought that you could even take the the clear wrap in food service. Saran wrap? Saran wrap and just put a big piece over the super touch. And then after that customer's done, you can just peel it off, throw it away and put a new piece on for the next one, you know? Yep, we actually tried that this morning here. Oh, you did, good, good. Yes, we did. <laughs> and did it did it work pretty well? 
Yeah, same too. Good, good. So, you know, there's going to be creative solutions out there to a lot of the uh, the new way of doing business, shall we say, because that's what we'll call it. I, I hate, I'm not a big fan of the new normal either, personally, but th let's face it, we will have to change the way we've been doing some Yeah, things, most so. people don't like change, but it's coming. <laughs> no, that's true, especially the bowling world customers, our mm -hmm. regular league customers. They're not big change agents. No, Our no, casual no. customers, they don't mind as much, but... <laughs> But we know. Well, listen, Jason, I really thank you for being here today and sharing some of your insights with us on the mechanics point of view. Um, I do want to tell everybody who's watching this about some of the resources that we have available. If you haven't checked out our resources page on cubicamf.com, we've got all the COVID uh, resources there from Small Business Association. By the way, if you haven't put your loan in, you need to hurry up and do that because that money's running out. Um, and then you, know, you want to get in that queue if you haven't. I mean, I don't know, I'm not trying to tell you how to financially advise you, but I did hear on the news that that money is running out. So you need to do that soon. Um, but we have all those links up there to the SBA, the BPAA, IAPA, any of the resources we've got there on, on cubicamf.com, as well as on our blog site, uh, be, um, Best Extras. You can get the information to get a hold of the blog. We're going to have next week um, two Beyond the Frame, so Tuesday and a Thursday show, where we'll have Mike Cannington from the Headpins Group. Um, he'll be on talking about business down there. And we're going to have John Kilpatrick from... Um, from his center and John's, John's a character. So you, you're gonna wanna tune in for that. Dottie's gonna be hosting next week. And we also have a webinar planned for Wednesday. So that's it for today. On behalf of Jason Smith, myself, Jay Nephew, and the rest of us here at Cubica AMF, we wanna keep you in the right frame of mind so you can keep making bowling amazing. And I wish you all a great weekend. Um, go out there, enjoy yourself outside, take 20 minutes out of your day to just do nothing but relax and chill out. Okay, guys, have a wonderful time. We'll talk to you soon.